Hello, this is Terry from Fabric Junction in Sturgis, South Dakota. And we are going to assemble our blocks that you have been making the last several weeks with our Midsummer's Eve quilt. And as you can see, I have put together several of my blocks with a layout. And I'm going to have Christopher shoot over to our sheet so that you know exactly what you need. To attach the blocks as part of your sashing, you'll need eight three and a half by fifteen and a half inch rectangles. You'll also need eleven three and a half with the fabric, and remember that salvage to salvage uh, strips that we will use for part of the sashing and the first border. So as you can see, I have a specific laid out here. That is the one that is on the table. But if we refer back to our original quilt, that has a different layout to the blocks that you can do also. So any layout of your choosing will work. So let's put our sashing in. And as you can see, I've already started. Sometimes my blocks are just a smidgen off, maybe just a smidgen long or a smidgen short. But as long as these are 15 and a half, I can either ease this to the block or the block to the sashing. Ideally, we want them both to measure 15 and a half. So when I just line it up, I check to see how close I am, and this one here looks really good. So now, I will sew it using my quarter inch seam. As I put each row together, I get I press it. I need to press that. And generally, as you can see, the bulk goes towards the sashing, and that's the direction I want it to go on this one. After I press, now I'm ready to sew my rows together. So I measure my length and in this case it should measure 51 and a half inches and I measure right through the center so that way I don't get any distortions and I want to go to 51 and a half and as you can see eh, I'm about an eighth but that 51 and a half is what I'm going to cut my sashing strip which I have already cut and the first one I just sew it on. I kind of find my center point and sew it, ease it where I need to so that everything measures 51 and a half inches. Now because I'm not using cornerstones I want to make sure that I stay lined up. And I'll show you down here. I want to stay lined up this way. It is real easy to all of a sudden see a quilt and the next row is lined up over here or even just a quarter inch off. Visually it it just doesn't look as nice. So how I line it up before I press this I lay it out nice flat so that I can that it, it lays where it wants to lay without really stretching or giving. And what I do is I take my straight edge and I line up on my seam. And then I come down here and I put a little pencil mark. Not, not very long because all I need is as a reference point. And I come over here and do the same thing. I line up and I line up a long ways, not a little ways. I want to be a long ways 
to make sure that when I add my little mark and add my other piece that it will line up with the other sashing and I do that to both of them and as you can see I've marked now that I have those marked I add my next row get it flipped around here okay so I have the little marks so now this seam and this one will line up with those marks and I find them and I pin both of those seams and I do the same thing on the other one find my little marks line up the seam allowance so that little mark goes right up that seam allowance okay once they're pinned I kind of check which one is the longer and as you can see this block wants to go just a little bit more than the other and I check the other side too this determines which way which one goes down next to my feed dogs and I let my feed dogs then do all the easing so in this case since the blocks are just a smidgen bigger and I want to line up nice I let like I said I let my feed dogs do the easing for me so I get started. That one has a little more ease than I want. And I know this point's matched up, so I just kind of match up here. And so and I check and I always kind of hold it in half. And I catch up with myself. Close. I don't like to sew over my pins. I pull it. Pull the next pin. Now I have another block, and so now I just kind of need to check. Oh, and this one actually matches beautifully. All this sewing you can see why I did so much of my sewing ahead of time because you'll repeat this for every row until you have all your rows now to do the first border you'll need to take all your strips and sew them in the end. And we'll lay this out a little bit. And I've already done that here. So I have this long, enormous strip. And as you can see, on this particular one, you'll notice I did not cut my selvage off. If the selvage interferes with what I'm doing, or I do cut that off. If it doesn't, I just make a great big seam allowance, press it open, and lay it flat. So once I have my pieces sewn end to end, I will have to measure them to fit. So to do my border, the first thing I put on is the sides. So to do the side, I suppose I better turn it that direction. So to do the sides, once again, I lay it out so I can measure it. 
Now mathematically I have figured it out, but I double check it to make sure that it's the same. And you cut your pieces, and I'll have it on the website. I know this one here, if I remember right, is 75 and a half. I think that's right. 60, 50, no, not 75. Well, I should know. I have one piece cut here. My mind is going blank on me this today. Oh, it could be. 72, 3, 4, 5 and a half. So I cut my piece to fit that length. If yours is different, that's okay. Cut it to what fits. I find my center, and I find the center on my quilt, which I know should be right here in the middle of this one, and I pin the two together. And I, from now I do kind of the same principle I did before. I go down to my end. I line up my end. I pin. I was going to say, maybe I cut this one a little big because it is too long. I did. I overcut. So I need to correct my cut on, on this particular one. And I know exactly what I did. But I come, I come to the other end. I pin it. And then I pin it in the middle. So I check to make sure that everything's going to lay flat and pin it. And now I sew it. And I do the same thing on the other side. So the key to that one is cut the correct measurement. Once I have done it to both sides, I open it up, I press it, again I measure the distance, which would include the border, so I measure all the way across and I cut my top and bottom border that same length. So once you get those sewn on, check out the next step. We'll be back again to show you the final borders on how to attach those to your quilts. So have fun putting your sashing and your borders together. And thank you for watching.